G'day, Ken. G'day, Ben. A couple of questions that keep coming up with how much solar do you need for different batteries, etc. Can you help uh, answer some questions on that? Certainly, Ken. It's a question we get all the time. How much yep. solar you need for a battery bank? Let's go for a bit of a wander. We can talk about it. Great. Thanks, mate. Now, Ben, uh, you recently upgraded the solar on my van. Yep. Because I put in a new compressor fridge. So the, the existing batteries weren't getting enough power uh, to recharge them, mm -hmm. uh, considering the draw on the compressor fridge. So how do you actually match the, the lithium battery to the solar panels? That's an awesome question. And I always like to say too, it's a matter of matching your battery bank to your charging system. Because there's multiple ways of charging your setup. Right. Of course, solar is one of them. Charging off a generator off mains is another. DC-DC mm -hmm. DC charging is yes. another. All I generally say, and people tend to overcomplicate it, or sometimes they oversimplify it, they might go, hey, whatever size battery capacity you have, double it for your solar array. Can be a reasonable rule of thumb to a degree. Right. But the way you should be thinking of it is however much power you consume in a day, you need to be able to replenish that same amount in a day. It's as easy as that. So if you have, let's say this 300 amp hour lithium battery, mm -hmm. you don't need to have 600 watts of solar necessarily. Let's say you only used 50 amp hour a day right. on average. As long as your solar array can produce 50 amp hour, well, that means day one, you're at 100%. And by the end of day one, you get down to 80. You charge it back up to 100. That's fine. And we need to allow a cloud factor and uh, under the tree factor and that as well for the solar panels. There is that. So yeah, You can do that in just having more solar panels. Yes. Or a lot of people, maybe they can't fit that. Maybe it's on a ute, for example. They can only get the one panel. And that's where if the solar is enough to run their fridge the majority of the time, for those cloudy weather days, you might have a DC to DC charger. Right. You can go for a drive and charge it up that way. So I generally just say, look, if you've got a 200 watt panel, just work on say six hours of good sun on an average, maybe a little bit less being flat mounted. Yep. And if you work on, let's just say 10 amps an hour, you're gonna get 60 amp hour of charge roughly yep. out of a 200 watt panel. If you've got three of them, well, that's 180 amp hour of charge, yep. which also means too, if you're trying to fully take advantage of this 300, you wanna be able to fully use all of it overnight mm -hmm. and charge it up the next day, you actually need more than just 600 watts. Right. You're gonna need nearly a thousand watts to charge it from dead flat to full in a singular day. Right. However, most people don't use all that in a day. The idea of having the slightly bigger battery is for regular use, you might only use 100, 150 amp hour. And as long as your solar can replenish that, happy days. Yep. And the benefit of that extra capacity is, as you said, yep. you want to park under a tree, you have some poor weather. You've now got a couple of days of buffer before yep. you need to go for a drive or pull it out in the sun. So it's not as simple as just double your solar array yep. or a big battery, big solar. Whatever you use, you just work out your daily draw. So in your case, we went your compressor fridge, worked out how much it used over the course of a day, yep. had a look that you got some lights in there, a little bit of TV, you know, yep. you use the pump. And then we sort of looked at that and went, hey, look, 400 watts, 400 watts. that'll be fine. And it's worked fine. It, 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 I just leave the fridge on now 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Even when we're at home, I don't have to take everything out of the fridge. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> I, I love it. That's yeah. the way. And um, something we, we think about or we think you should think about as well is for the most part panels, especially if you're paying someone to fit it for you, yep. whether you're fitting 100 watter, 130 watt or 200 or 250, at the end of the day, it's a similar amount of work. Right. And that's something you should be looking at your installer for as well. Whether he's fitting a panel this big or this big, the labor should be about the same. Yep. The only difference there is the cost of the panel, right. which is also why we tend to use 200s. Much bigger than that is a little bit impractical for fitting on caravans for width around the aircon yes. and that sort of stuff. However, much smaller than that, and you're gonna have to fit more and more and more of them to achieve the same result. So 200s are good because you, you pay for the panel, you pay for fitment of one panel. Yep. And in your case, 300 to 350 watts may have been enough. Yep. But by the time we fit two 150s or we fit two 200s, yep. you're talking like 50, 60 bucks difference. Yep. So yep. go to the 200s. Yep. So solar panel to battery? Yeah, it, it does depend on your individual application. But I would say for most people, if you go 100 amp hour or maybe a 200 amp hour lithium battery, sort of somewhere in that range, 150 even, and then marry that up to 400 or 600 watts of solar. If you're not talking about inverters and 240 volt usage, yeah. that's gonna smash the majority of people's use cases. Yeah. Running a compressor fridge, some lights, TV, water pump, that should do the job. Thanks very much, Ben. Thank you. Thank you.